Hello everyone, in this video I'll show uh, an attempt to build a low noise uh, power supply using analog devices uh, LTM AG49 integrated uh, converter together with low noise uh, linear dropout regulators for the output. Here we will assemble module and uh, go through all the steps required for this. First step here is taking stainless steel stencil to use it for printing solder paste. Here I am aligning all the openings in stencil to the pads on the circuit board. So that's where the paste uh, will be applied. And we don't want to have any solder mask uh, gaps or openings here. After doing alignment I press on the stencil to make sure there is no movement. And next we take a solder paste and apply it on the board. So this is essentially a very similar process to silk screen. And we want to have a paste uh, applied on uh, exposed pads, but not anywhere else. And the paste I uh, use here is RoHS compliant. It's uh, lead free. So it needs a little bit higher temperatures uh, to properly reflow. And it's very important at this stage uh, to avoid any PCB movement under the stencil because that will cause us uh, smears and uh, excessive paste uh, on the board, probably leading to a shorts on the assembly when we have parts uh, installed. And printing paste is very simple, it's just uh, using metal squeegee to run the paste in all the pads and make sure correctly applied paste will have nice smooth uh, top and there will be no excessive uh, amount left on the board when we remove the stencil. It's actually best to apply a little bit extra paste on the stencil so you can do it in all one take. This will ensure the best uh, solder pads quality. Now at this stage we would carefully inspect all the pads and remove any excessive paste if there is any. But in this case uh, there is no super fine pitch components and it looks uh, alright for the application needed. And this BGA component is 127 mm pitch. Here we're mostly worried about BGA, but because 127 mm pitch, it's actually quite easy. Now the next step is most time consuming one. It's actually taking all the parts and putting them in a proper positions on the circuit board making sure that we get the orientation right and uh, all the component nominals and values are matching the design spec and BOM list. So I'm doing here a placement by hand because this is just only a couple boards that I would be assembling and it wouldn't make uh, much sense to run the programming for pick and place machine so it's also a fairly simple board so there should be not much time uh, spent uh, to place the board based on experience it should take maybe half an hour or so when we have all the parts ready it's uh, essentially just mechanical uh, taking and placing process my usual strategy is to place uh, smaller components uh, first because it is easier to have uh, space for big components when all the small stuff already on the board and you're not trying to fit a tiny 0402 capacitor resistor between two huge uh, tantalum capacitors like in this case. Here we have uh, mostly uh, 0603 uh, capacitors, uh, some of those big capacitors uh, for uh, bulk capacitance and 0402 
and 0603 uh, resistors around LTM module and around uh, LDO regulators. When placing components, uh, I apply very light pressure down, so the component actually stick to paste and it would uh, stay in place and not move around. When I'm, if I need to move the board or uh, rotate it uh, for easier uh, placement access. And here you can see 0603 comp capacitors uh, actually being placed. And also the TSSOP package for positive uh, LT3045 regulator. It has exposed pad on, on a body. So it has to be soldered to the circuit board for thermal and electrical reasons as well. And the similar uh, story is about negative regulator, which is in place in right now. This is uh, LT3094 component. And actually, the circuit uh, board is designed to support both LT3094 and 3093 and as well as a few other regulators in similar package. This PCB layout also has excessive amount of uh, capacitor footprints. Uh, most likely it's actually suboptimal to populate all of them. So I'll assemble a few boards uh, here with different capacitor cap configuration so we can test electrically uh, resulting boards and actually see if there is uh, any positive or negative effects uh, depends on different capacitor placements. Capacitor placement and uh, overall location of uh, low noise uh, linear regulators next to switching uh, power supply sources is uh, quite uh, tricky. So there is a few details about this in LT3045 and LT3094 datasheet. These linear regulators are so low noise that if you have a capacitor at the input of this regulator, which is very close to switching power supply nearby, it will get a magnetic coupling and uh, cause a noise level increase instead of uh, what you would normally expect, uh, decreasing noise from uh, added capacitance. So, uh, in this case, uh, placing extra capacitors might actually hurt the performance instead of helping it. So, it will be interesting to actually test this in practice and uh, see how different configurations uh, affect the output uh, performance and uh, noise figure. For now, I'll just uh, place all the output capacitors and uh, we'll uh, test this as a baseline. So this placement in total takes uh, about 35 to 40 minutes. And at this point, uh, I just uh, speed up video. So we don't wait a uh, whole 30 minutes uh, on me placing the board with all the parts. Here I'm finishing all 0402s uh, next to LTM8049 module and now it's time to install actual module inside. So 
it doesn't have to be exactly perfectly aligned to both it need to be kind of there and then the reflow process will do the rest during reflow a molten solder will actually pull the chip uh, and all the BGA balls uh, in the optimal position so the BGA uh, package would uh, self-align itself perfectly against the PCB pads so if there is uh, less than a half a pitch uh, of a shift in either direction that will be automatically self-corrected so that's one of the benefits of BGA packages that uh, they are quite uh, manufacturable and friendly to careful design and here we almost finish all the parts on the boards so a few empty spots are left uh, for optional components like output uh, 10 talon capacitors now I'll just start few uh, debug LEDs to see uh, if the power is there or not and then we can uh, fire up the oven and see how it goes this PCB is actually quite small and it's only four layers so it doesn't have much of the thermal mass it can be reflowed even with the hot air station if enough uh, care applied and not to overheat any components so there are a couple tricks to do that but uh, I will use uh, fancy conveyor oven instead it's a 1.8 kilowatt uh, it is six zone oven this oven has six heaters three on the top and three on the bottom and uh, each profile setting you can see on the screen this is actually speed up video so the real time is about uh, three times uh, slower than this and the total conveyor time is seven minutes 32 seconds with speed 90 millimeters per minute there are multiple different ways uh, how the board can be heated and reflowed so you can uh, surely find a lot of uh, different tutorials and material online uh, if you just google SMT reflow oven and SMT reflow process and while the oven is heating up it takes about uh, 30 minutes or so I am here placing the second uh, PCB so we can do uh, multiple PCBs at the same time the process is essentially the same so I will not be showing the placement of each part this time and uh, let's see the photo of already placed PCB instead after placement I make sure that all the polarities are correct the pin number one orientations on ICs is correct and diodes, uh, LEDs, uh, stuff like that and now we're back to a conveyor oven so this oven has uh, indicator LED and also plays some music when it's ready so it's almost there and here we go the green LED means uh, oven is ready and reached uh, desired profile temperatures and now we can get the PCBs uh, placed on the conveyor and wait uh, for seven minutes till they go through all the uh, steps it's essentially just like cooking some cake so here I'm placing the second board right next to the uh, first one for larger boards it may need uh, some extra time uh, between each board because the thermal mass uh, on larger heavy boards would actually decrease the temperature inside uh, oven and we'll need to compensate for that by either giving some gap between the boards or allowing more time uh, between inserting uh, next batch of uh, PCBs and PCB is just going through the whole conveyor straight down not too exciting and now 7 minutes and 30 seconds later 
we get the first board out so it's just creeping right there and there are two fans uh, on the output uh, of the oven conveyor so this board I actually just warm enough uh, but it's safe to touch sometimes we get few parts crooked like here you could actually see the negative regulator is uh, a little bit sideways but that can be easily fixed uh, by some uh, hand uh, reworking with a hot air or infrared station but the most important part uh, BGA chip looks okay and also there is no any exploded uh, parts uh, or any other issues uh, visible on the first glance so that's a good uh, start and the second board comes out just like that and we're good to go to further inspection and first power on and here is the photo of uh, BGA sideways you can see there is no shorts all bolts looks very nice and here is the front surface of assembled board so it looks good all the design information and schematics and details about this module will be public and uh, you can already see some of the draft article on xdevs.com slash article slash lxref so thanks for watching.